Welcome to the State Library of North Carolina's instructional series we're calling Information University, or Inform You for short. The following video is the third part of a four-part video series on file naming. In this segment of the tutorial, we'll identify some things you should avoid when you name your files. First, never use special characters in a file name. What are special characters, you may ask? In general, they're non-alphanumeric characters, such as these. But why shouldn't special characters be used? Many special characters have non-textual meanings in certain programming languages. For example, slashes are indicators of folder levels in Windows systems. Since it is impossible to predict how files will be used and on what types of systems, it's best to avoid characters that could be misread. In most cases, you'll get an error message when a special character with an alternate meaning in another program is used in a file name. Since you can't always count on that to happen, it's best just to avoid them. Of course, as with many rules, there are a few exceptions. The exceptions to this rule are the period, underscore, and dash characters. It is universally accepted that the last period in a file name indicates that the file extension will follow. Remember, the file extension tells you and the computer what program will open the file. Both the underscore and the dash characters are considered special characters. However, they do not have any non-textual meaning. You may choose to use either of them in a file name. We suggest you use them to separate words in file names. Second on our list is Never use spaces in file names. Why should spaces in file names be avoided? Microsoft does it. Spaces make things easier for humans to read, but file names with spaces can cause problems for some software programs. It's better to err on the side of caution and eliminate spaces in your file names. Instead, either run the words in the file name together, or, as we've already suggested, use underscores or dashes to separate the words. Third, never change a file extension using the rename function. As we explained earlier, this doesn't actually convert your file to a new format. Why not just rename the file extension? Changing the file extension using this method could make the file inaccessible by your computer and unreadable by you. Unless there is a copy of the file somewhere else or you act quickly to change the file extension back, the content could be lost forever. Finally, never count on capitalization to distinguish one file name from another. Why isn't capitalized version of a file name different from the lowercase version of a file name? Some systems read capitalized and lowercase versions of the same file name identically and treat them as duplicates. Since we can't know what systems will need to work with files in the future, never assume that this won't be a problem. So that's it! Avoiding these four simple actions can make it easier to successfully access your files in the future. We hope you've enjoyed part three of this series. The next part tells you best practices for file naming.